All right, let's look at concept seven and dealing with the quadratic formula. So if we're to list off methods that we've discussed to solve a quadratic, um, we can look at graphing. And when we graph, we're specifically looking at x-intercepts, where it's crossing the x-axis. We could do factoring. But we have a limitation here that it must be factorable. If it's not factorable, we cannot use factoring, meaning if we got something that was, say, 6 that adds up to be 3, that's not factorable. There's not two numbers when I multiply together, I get 6, but add up to be 3. So it must be factorable in order to use factoring. All right, we talked about using square roots. And again, with square roots, we had to be in the form of ax squared equals c. We talked about completing the square, which completing the square is powerful because we can do it now. Any quadratic we can make into a perfect square and solve using square roots and be able to find the answer. There's a lot of steps with it, but we can do it with any of them. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is the quadratic formula. All right, so this one is very powerful as well because now we can use this on any quadratic, just like completing the square. But this one is just a formula that we have to work with, and the formula will tell us the x values. So for the quadratic formula, to solve any quadratic, it needs to be in this form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We use x equals, and again, this is giving us the value x. Okay, It's giving us the answer negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We want to solve now using the quadratic formula. So whenever we're using the quadratic formula, I'd encourage you to just make a little cheat sheet of what your a, your b, and your c is. So in this case, I know my a is 1, my b is negative 5, and my c is negative 7. All right, so we can go to our formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and we can start simply filling in our a b and c values negative b is our formula well our b is already negative so you can think of it as a negative of negative 5 or you can just simply think of it as positive 5. So sometimes you might even hear me say the opposite of B. Well, B is negative 5. The opposite would be positive 5. So 5 plus or minus the square root. Use parentheses here because negative 5 is squared. If you put in your calculator negative 5 squared without any parentheses, it's going to tell you negative 25. All right. But we know any no negative number squared will be a positive. So negative 5 squared minus 4 times my a value, which is 1, times my c value, which is negative 7, all over 2 times 1. With this, I would encourage you to find your discriminant separate, and your discriminant is everything underneath your radical. So do, you can do some scratch work over here and say, okay, what is my discriminant? My discriminant is going to be the negative 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7. When I do all that, I end up with 53. So under my radical here, I simply have 53. We've cleaned that up a whole bunch. All divided by 2. So this is saying 5 plus or minus the square root of 53 divided by 2. Well, square root of 53 is not a perfect square, and it does not have a perfect square factor, so this simply would be the final answer. X is 5 plus or minus root 53 over 2. So that's two solutions, 5 plus root 53 over 2 and 5 minus root 53 over 2. Let's do another one for practice. This one is not set up in standard form yet, but we can make it into standard form. 
So this is 2x squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. So my a is 2, my b is negative 1, my c is negative 4. So I can put all of these right into my formula. So x is going to be negative or opposite of b. So in this case, it's just positive 1 plus or minus square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 4, all divided by 2 times 2. So again, let's just look at that discriminant piece first. Let's just look at the piece that's underneath my radical. So negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times a negative 4. If we work all that out, we end up with 33. So now we have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 all divided by all this divided by 4. So this would be my final answer. x equals 1 plus or minus root 53, or I'm sorry, root 33 divided by 4. Let's do one more. So in this one, I know my A is 1, my B is 6, my C is 9. So X is going to be equal to the opposite of B, so it's negative 6, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C, all divided by 2 times 1. If I look at my discriminant on its own, I'm going to have 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. When I work all this out, I get 0. So I have x equaling negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0. Well, that's fine. Square root of 0, we can do that. Square root of 0 is just 0. So in this case, all I'm left with is negative 6 divided by 2, which ends up being negative 3. So my solution, and I only have one solution, is going to be negative 3. Another one, again, same process. Make sure we know our A's, B's, and C's. So A is negative 1, B is 2, C is negative 9. We can put right in here, X equals opposite of B, so it's a negative 2 plus or minus b squared. So I'm going to have 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 1. c is negative 9, all divided by 2 times a negative 1. We'll look at our discriminants. It's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times a negative 9. When I work all this out, I get negative 32. So I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 32, all divided by negative 2. All right, this should throw off an alarm in your head. We cannot do the square root of a negative number. Cannot happen. Okay, can't happen. So if this ever comes up where you have a negative under a radical, you simply write no solution. And we're going to be more specific with this one. We're going to say no real solution. So determining those number of solutions. So Basically, just looking at a quadratic equation, we can have two real solutions. For example, x squared equals 4. x can equal plus or minus 2. x squared equaling 0. x has to be 0. And then x squared equaling negative 4. That is no real solution that we can have for this one. 
how to determine the number of solutions. Okay, so we can determine how many there are when we look at the discriminant. Again, that value under the radical. Do not include your radical piece. You're simply looking at the discriminant, the B squared minus 4AC part. Okay, again, make note, this is only the B squared minus 4AC part. Do not include the radical symbol. And so here's a quick chart to show us how many solutions there are based on the discriminant. So if my discriminant is positive, I'm going to have two real solutions, meaning it's crossing the x-axis at two spots. Here and here, here and here. If I'm at zero, there's only one solution. So right here and right here. If my discriminant is less than zero, so it's a negative value, there's no real solutions, but I could still graph it. It's simply not crossing my x-axis anywhere. So there's nowhere it's crossing my x-axis. So when we say no solution, we're talking, we're trying to solve to figure out where it crosses the x-axis at. If it's negative, there's no real solution. So let's take a look at one. What is the number of real solutions to this? 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. All right. Again, to determine the number of solutions, all we're looking at is the discriminant. We're not solving anything here. There's no quadratic formula going on. They're asking us simply for the number of solutions. All we're using is the discriminant. All right. So in this case, my A is 2. My B is negative 3. My C is 5. B squared would be a negative 3 squared. And I encourage you to use parentheses with these negatives. Minus 4 times A times C, which is 5. When I do this, I end up with a negative 31. So number of real solutions, this when we have that negative value, there are no real solutions would be our final answer here. Take a look at these homework problems, page 245, and have those ready to go for our next class session.